one of the things we, we talk about, especially um, around uh, Basel III and things of that nature, is increased capital costs for the banks and, sure. and um, you know, the, the reduced return on equity of trading operations. But turning to the OCC, turning to Singapore and, and um, legislation or uh, regulatory regimes being posted in the UK, specifically around, around fintech, what kind of barrier to entry is this new regulation uh, regime going to impose? And could that actually curtail innovation? I know that the UK and Singapore and a couple other jurisdictions are, are working with these ideas of regulatory sandboxes. Some people have called the OCC FinTech Charter a type of regulatory sandbox. I think those ideas are very good ideas. I'm a strong believer in allowing innovation to thrive, not allowing existing players to crush innovation. I also think that there's a huge amount of regulation right now, and some of that can be a very big barrier to entry. So providing opportunities for younger companies, newer companies to test their ideas, I think is a very positive development. You need to be cautious about it. It can't just be a free-for-all that allows people to lose money and get hurt. Um, maybe we'll talk a little bit more about blockchain in, in a few minutes, where, which is much more of a free-for-all right now. Um, but look, the idea of creating these spaces that are safe for both companies to try out ideas and for investors to have access to those ideas uh, is, I think, a very powerful one. Now, one of the things that I, I've been observing lately, um, you know, talk, let's talk a, a classic technology company, uh, Microsoft. Personally, I've been impressed with a lot, of, a lot of new developments that have been coming out, but there's also a lot of replication going on, right? So Microsoft Teams was pronounced as a, as a killer to Slack. Uh, Microsoft Planner is now, you know, replication of, of Jira um, and other types of software. What's not to say with this kind of regulatory um, barrier or of entry that just gives the incumbents an opportunity to come up to speed much more quicker, do some buyouts of, uh, or, or onboard some of these fintech technologies um, and recapture the, just their market share that is uh, uh, kind of uh, being uh, shocked right now. I think that's going to happen regardless of how high the regulatory barriers are. Uh, but we, we see the fight over the purchase of WorldPay right now, which uh, two, two large financial services companies want to buy a third fairly large financial services company. All of that stuff is going to keep happening. Uh, I think many of the traditional financial services companies that, that I talk with are looking at having a venture capital or merchant banking type arm so that they can keep track of what's going on in the fintech industry. They can make targeted investments in the fintech industry. They can look at strategic relationships with fintech players. All of those things are going on. They will always be going on. I by the way, I think that's a really good thing, too. It's, again, part of the market functioning. But I, I don't worry too much about the regulatory barriers being too high. Uh, I think the pendulums after 2008 sort of swung in one direction. I think the pendulum is swinging back a little bit right now. So I don't expect that we're going to see regulatory barriers to entry that are too high at this point.